Hello and welcome to Connect. I'm your host, Randy Shervilo. We're on location today just outside Saskatoon at the Black Fox Farm and Distillery, and we'll interview Addie Ramachandran from the Saskatoon Farmers Market, as well as John Cote and Barb Stefanishin Cote from the Black Fox Farm and Distillery. As always, we'd like to connect with you. Tweet us at connect underscore YXZ. Follow us on Facebook to watch new and past interviews or email connectyxe at gmail.com with any future guest or topic suggestions. Saskatoon Farmers Market has been around for a long time and I've invited Addie Ramachandran to come and give us some insight into what's been going on and what's happening in the future. Addie, thanks for taking some time for us today. The pleasure is mine. Tell us a little bit about the origin of the, uh, the farmer's market and uh, the differences between the cooperative um, and the farmer's market. The Saskatoon market Farmer's time. Market Cooperative was established in August 1975, 44 years ago. Um, since then it has moved around Saskatoon, mostly as an outdoor market. It used to spend the winters setting up at different buildings, temporary buildings, and it moved into its permanent ho home in Riversdale 12 years ago. That's been its permanent summer and winter home. And how many vendors would, would typically uh, be a member of it? About 100 members. It varies from year to year, plus about 30 or so non-member vendors. And, and what are the products that you typically would offer on, on a, any given Saturday, Wednesday, and days in between? Saturday's our biggest day. Mm -hmm. So we have fruits, vegetables, eggs, honey, cheese, meat, crafts, lots of prepared foods, ethnic foods, traditional foods, uh, clothing. Sunday, I would say, is our second biggest day. We still have a good selection of all the items. And Wednesday is our third biggest day. So when people would sign up for that, if, if I happen to have a small half-acre lot or something uh, growing vegetables, would I be able to be a member or how oh. would I be, be part totally. of that? We're always looking for new vendors, especially agricultural vendors. So if you grow vegetables or fruit or farm chickens, yeah, we're looking for new vendors to put in applications all the time. There can never be too many vendors. If you're having uh, people coming to the farmer's market, uh, it's not just about food. There's also an entertainment and a, so a social component yes. that are involved with that. Tell us a little bit about that. There's a social and community component. People come to the market not just to buy food, as you mentioned, but to talk to the farmers, to interact with them, and to build a relationship with them. And every vendor has their own set of loyal customers who go to that farmer because they have a they have built up a relationship with them based on trust. It takes a few years to build up that relationship, and that's. That relationship is something that's unique to a farmer's market, like the Saskatoon Farmer's Market Co-op. It is not something you can get at a grocery store or an artisanal store. Even a store that focuses on local does not offer that relationship that you can get from the customer talking to the farmer. And, and are we seeing a trend just in terms of not only food production, but on the consumer end? Uh, people are more interested in, in how the food was made or where it was grown. and. Uh, those environmental impacts yes. that, that happen with uh, transporting food long distances. Uh, are you hearing that from the consumer as well as the, the producer? Totally. Uh, food transparency, food security, climate change, food sovereignty, all of these issues are interlinked and they'll probably become more prominent as we go further into the 21st century. So at the Saskatoon Farmers Market Cooperative, we're trying to stay ahead of the curve here, trying to forecast what trends will be like, not just a couple of years from now, but a couple of decades from now. And what we see, what we predict, is that consumers will prioritize food transparency and the local food diet, low miles from production to sale, more than ever before, more than now even. When we have, uh vegetables, if, if uh, cucumbers and carrots, for example, um, if we only have a short growing season in Saskatchewan, are we looking at hothouses or, or importing some of this from outside of Saskatoon where there might be more of that? 
Hot houses and greenhouses, definitely. We already have a couple of greenhouse vendors in the market. One of them is Floating Gardens, and they are present all year with produce. So we're definitely open to having more greenhouse producers join to expand the selection of products that are available all year. Um, importing products is not something that we would be interested in because we want to keep the focus on Saskatchewan and maintain that food transparency focus and keep it local. That would all be part of the, 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 the mandate, I guess, of, of the cooperative yeah. to, to... And I uh, see that demand rising. Is that right? Yeah, for sure. When we have the uh, people coming to the farmer's market, are they going there and then uh, maybe looking at something that is close by to also augment some of the foods that may not be at the farmer's market? Would they still go to a grocery store or are they solely involved with purchasing all their food from you? I would say uh, there are some items that are not available in the market. So yeah, customers do go to other grocery stores to supplement that. And does that happen with uh, uh, animal butchery if there's chickens or pigs or beef cattle? Uh, are there vendors that would contract that uh, sourcing of, of the animal uh, carcass from different abattoirs or different producers that would have the product for them? Yeah, the that's stores? an interesting question. So at the Saskatoon Farmers Market, our policy is make it, bake it, grow it, gather it. And one of those criteria has to be satisfied. So if someone sources meat from other farms, local farms, and butchers it and processes it, for example, the pig and pantry, mm -hmm. that satisfies the make criteria, so they are a vendor at the market. Alternatively, you could have a vendor who raises the meat but outsources the butchery to someone else and then sells the meat. But they grow them, they raise the meat, so they again satisfy the, the grow criteria. I would think that if uh, you know people are, are dealing with the vendors in the farmers market, they're they're hearing about whether or not the animals are housed humanely and mm -hmm. they're not kept in cages or free range and so on, and that I think would ultimately affect the the taste and presentation. Um, are we going to see a move away from uh, meat proteins to plant proteins and I guess that kind of a shift in diet that we're starting to see in some communities. Uh, we hear about the, the non-meat hamburger. Mm. Uh, is, is that something that you're seeing is in trends in consumerism? I would say no. I would say the customers of the Saskatoon Farmers Market Co-op are primarily interested in healthy eating, um, unprocessed foods, uh, local eating and environmentally friendly methods of production, not necessarily veganism or vegetarianism, although, although I would say our customers do eat a fairly high proportion of plant products in their diet. But they're mainly looking for animals that have been raised and pastured humanely and slaughtered humanely. What is uh, happening in, in terms of this coming fall? You mentioned there was a uh, a different a German yeah this is a German harvest festival the first weekend of October and what would people expect to see there uh, the German Concordia Club is organizing that uh, it's there'll be German dances and food and and all of that entertainment happening yeah, at the uh, Riversdale location yes, then. out on Market Square with with the event happening in Riversdale and uh, the uh, German Concordia Club present there are there other things that you're going to be working on? I guess the uh, obvious discussion is a, a relocation. Is there something that uh, we can look forward to? We're not losing the farmer's market. There's not, they're not disbanding is what, no. what I'm making the, the farmer's market cooperative is not disbanding. Right. The focus is on finding a new home. Right. And we have not ruled out staying at this location, but that ultimately now is up to the city if they want to step in and help facilitate a solution for us because we have already submitted two proposals to the city and both were rejected. So our focus is now shifted to finding a new home for the co-op and we have a couple of options there. Well, we obviously like to keep you in the city core uh, and, and uh, maintain that uh, central uh, location, but understanding your challenges, that would be uh, appreciated. Uh, with the number of members that you have, are all of them within Saskatoon per se or would they be kind of living or 
coming in from outside of Saskatoon? Is there a 50-50 type of split? It is about 60-40, I would say. About 60% come from outside Saskatoon. Most of our farmers are from out of town. Right. And we even have one farmer from out of province. Wow. And they're coming in uh, just on Saturdays and Sundays then with their Most of products? them, most, the majority come in Saturdays. Yeah. A good proportion of them come in Sundays as well. Okay. And a few of them come in Wednesdays. Looking forward with the farmer's market and, and uh, its existence since 1975, it's, it's been in different locations and so on, but it's always weathered the storm, if you will. Uh, do you see the, the market numbers of vendors growing to meet the needs of a city that's going from 250 to 350,000 people? I do. Yeah. I do. I think there's plenty of potential there in terms of demand for local product. Uh, and I would say the market, the market in my opinion right now is doing pretty well. If we had stability in terms of a stable home, we'd probably be doing even better. I think that's our biggest takeaway is uh, all things being equal, you know, if, if there was some predictability for not only the farmers that are, are serving the community, but the community knowing they can count on you that same location and that uh, constant presence, I think that's uh, first and foremost in our minds. Absolutely. Uh, Addy, I want to thank you for making time today and coming down and uh, having this interview, and I wish you the best of luck in the future. Thanks. Thanks, Randy. Appreciate that. Stay with us. We'll be right back.